Hi, I'm Chris, and this is my review of the Skywatch StarQuest 130P, an entry level telescope retailing for £175 in the UK or $215 in the US. Despite the low price, this is a proper fully fledged telescope featuring a parabolic mirror, bringing all light for a common focus. This is what you want, unlike the softer images given by spherical mirrors commonly found in telescopes around this price. The slender aluminium tripod is very lightweight, but it does cause the image at the eyepiece to wobble several seconds if you try and adjust the focuser. If there's a gust of wind even, it does it. You basically have to let the vibration settle for a good 5 seconds each time you touch the focuser. And to be honest, this can be a little frustrating, but the same goes for any tripod mounted telescope in this price bracket. All is not lost though, there are things you can do to help negate these dreaded wobbles. You can buy anti-vibration pads to place under the tripod feet, or make or buy a focus mask to place in front of the optics, making focusing wobbly objects much easier and precise. If the idea of waiting a few seconds for a wobbly image to settle is a deal breaker for you though, you might want to consider something like a Dobsonian design telescope instead. These have a basic but sturdy mounting which is easy to use, however they don't typically have the feature to automatically track objects. And that's the thing, there is a motor drive available for the StarQuest range which allows the telescope to automatically keep pace with the rotation of the Earth, keeping objects centred in the eyepiece or the camera sensor. A motor drive can be very handy if you want to share your observations with family and friends, or if you'd like to do some basic imaging of the moon and planets. Whilst we're talking of imaging, the StarQuest is pretty decent for imaging the moon and planets as these are bright and only require very short exposure times. However, the StarQuest really isn't a telescope for deep sky imaging of galaxies and nebulae. For starters, the focuser doesn't have sufficient travel for a camera to reach focus. You can get round this by using a Barlow lens, but this has the effect of doubling the f-ratio, making deep space objects just appear too dim to pick up on camera. Great for nearby bright planets though. Adding to this the wobbly tripod and no poloscope built, built into the mount and you would just end up chucking most of your exposures out due to streaking stars. Trust me, I've been there and I've got the t-shirt. The package does however include a camera adapter for attaching a DSLR or a mirrorless camera to the telescope rings. This should allow for a spot of wide field imaging via the camera lens, although I didn't test this out in this review. One useful feature I stumbled across was the ability to change the StarQuest mount from equatorial mode to a more simple up, down, left, right, out azimuth mode. I'm not sure if this was intended by Skywatcher, they already have the Avant range of telescopes designed specifically to do this, but nevertheless the StarQuest appears to do it also, which is really a bonus. The mount's right ascension and declination clutch knobs are also large and well placed, making them easy to find in the dark, perfect for gloved hands on a cold winter's night although I did spot a little oversight on Skywatcher's part. The wing nut that holds the Vixen dovetail in place can collide with a bolt for the slow motion controls. I discovered this when I was observing one night and tracking came to a sudden halt. This isn't a deal breaker by any means and is easily rectified by a short slow motion control bolt, but I just wish Skywatcher had noticed this in the design stages of this telescope. In general I think the mount head is an improvement on the EQ1 and EQ2 it replaces very nicely machined and the pictures online really don't do it justice, much nicer in the flesh. More good news is the inclusion of a vixen dovetail, and a lovely green shiny one at that. Often at this price, the rings holding the optics attach directly to the mount. With a vixen dovetail, you can simply undo a single bolt to remove the optics. This makes transporting the telescope a little easier, and allows you to use optical tubes such as this with different mounts. Also, a Vixen dovetail can be handy for balancing the optics if there isn't sufficient travel by adjusting the tube rings on their own. The SkyQuest comes complete with a red dot finder to help find targets. It's a personal preference, but I do prefer a red dot finder to an optical finder because you don't magnify the sky. Everything looks more familiar for a red dot finder. I think they are just generally easier for someone starting out in astronomy to use. There are two eyepieces included in the package. 25mm giving 26 magnification and a 10mm giving 65 magnification. These are typical eyepieces shipped with most Skywatcher telescopes and it's well known that the 25mm isn't too bad at all but the 10mm really isn't particularly great but okay to get you started. If you were to upgrade one I would recommend upgrading the 10mm. Probably the most controversial thing about the StarQuest 130p is the inclusion of a factory collimated and fixed primary mirror cell. 
In other words, the primary mirror at the bottom of the tube is fixed in place with no obvious means of adjustment if the mirrors need aligning. Traditionally, Newtonian telescopes such as the 130p have several screws to help align and collimate the mirrors. Therefore, the lack of these screws is a big change to the way things are usually done. Worry being, what do you do if the mirrors need aligning? I was a bit sceptical when I first came across this factory fixed primary mirrors on the Skywatcher telescopes, but having now used three different telescopes with this system, I'm pleased to report they work well and haven't had any issues whatsoever with mirror alignment. So let's summarise the good and bad points about this telescope, the pros and the cons. The good things, the pros, are the optics. It's a well-figured parabolic primary mirror on this telescope and I feel that's really good for starting out observing and imaging the moon and planets as well as observing brighter deep sky objects. The mount head is very versatile being able to switch between equatorial and out azimuth modes. The clutches on the mount are large and nicely placed making them easy to use with gloved hands in the dark. There is an optional motor drive available for hands-free tracking also. I personally think the fixed primary mirror is a good thing, but if I hadn't experienced it myself, I would probably be a bit more sceptical. And I'm pleased to see a red dot finder as opposed to an optical finder because the Star Quest is aimed more so at people starting out in astronomy, and I just feel it's easier for them to use. The bad points are as follows. The biggest bad point by far, I feel, is the super lightweight tripod, which causes vibrations which can take a while to settle. Although as pointed out, this really is the case for pretty much all tripod mounted scopes in this price bracket, so this is a bad point for a lot of entry level telescopes. And the only other bad thing I can really think of is when the whole thing came to a halt because the slow motion control bolt caught on the bolt for the dovetail, and this is simply rectified by putting a shorter bolt in place. Really, I hope word gets back to Skywatcher about that. All in all, this is a very capable and versatile telescope for the money. The only thing it really doesn't do is deep sky imaging, but you generally need a bigger budget for that. I give this telescope a solid 7 telescopes out of 10. A big thank you to First Light Optics for loaning me this telescope to review. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to give it a like and subscribe if you're into telescopes, cameras, photography and imaging like me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.